how goes it? Now, you see, I might be all on my own now on Good Friday. I might be all on my own because we're an hour late. But there's a very good reason. There's a very good reason why, hey Zoe, why I'm an hour late. It's because um, Daniel Bland, I don't know if you follow him, uh, Bland Design, he's been part of the revamp, restyle, reveal, um, Lisa Dawson's, and he's done his bathroom and it looked really interesting. So he's gold leaf the tiles, really, gold leaf the tiles, and he's done this poured resin floor and it looked really interesting. And those two were going to have a, hey David, those two were going to have a chat at one o'clock, all about their bathroom, and I was going to join in. Um, and then it didn't happen. So I, I kind of shunted our cooking to two um, so I could watch that floor. However, I didn't actually get back here till about, um, I didn't get ready in the kitchen till about quarter past one. Um, Zoe's saying she's going to try again to watch the, the Lisa and Daniel chat at, you at, at four. I'm going to try as well because that looked really interesting. I've been watching, I've watched a lot of the, um, you know when the makers, uh, joiners and makers make the river tables. Have you seen them with beautiful live edge timber? Then they leave a gap and they pour resin in the middle. So you can make really amazing stuff with um, furniture. You can make breadboards and all sorts with that poured resin. So that's what um, Daniel has used on the floor. And then he's put the, um, he's put the dark dye in to make it look like marble. So I'm really intrigued as to how he's done it. It's, I mean, he's really good at what he does, isn't he? So anyway, so yes, so that's why we're not at one o'clock. Um, what else has been happening? Uh, well, how are you all doing? Um, God, Easter weekend. And what a weird one. What a weird one it's going to be. Um, Lady Jade, who lives here with us, Lady Jade and I went out and popped out this morning to do some food shopping. Um, and I also, I'll show you what I've bought. I'll show you some herbs that I've bought um, in a minute. Just let me move this food bin because I keep standing on it. Glamour. Um went down to Altrincham and then got back and, and I tell you what it's, I felt a bit um I felt a bit stressed out and anxious this last couple of days and I know that um, it's very easy isn't it when you're watching people do lives and when you're watching people do all their stuff at home and if they're doing things online and this week our things been on the telly and it all seems very you know like everything's perfect but I think it, no matter what you're doing and no matter how people um eat you perceive them to be I think everybody's feeling how um stressful and anxious the time and every time you turn on the telly and there's stuff going on so I've been quite look, looking forward to doing this quite relaxing salad now with you because it's something nice to do isn't it where you're just kind of focused on one thing I think that's why so many people are cooking and baking during this period because you can't be focused on all the bad stuff going on, can you, when you're cooking, when you're kneading some dough or when you're mixing a salad or making a cake. You're kind of just very focused on what you're doing and it, and it gives you it's something quite positive to do. So I've been really looking forward to actually to doing this today. Um, so what I'm going to do is a salad that I do when we used to have, when we used to have the How to Renovate days here on a Saturday. People used to book through Airbnb experiences or or people who've seen it online on Instagram and we show people how to re renovate we talk about pros and cons and, and what have you and this salad is a real favourite that I do on the Saturday afternoon for lunch and then and quite a lot of people ask me um, oh hello dad <laughs> can we say hello can we say hello who is it, who is it? can we say hello where is she no it's, it's not a person there's a few people on there so you got to say hello. Say hello, Instagram. Hello, oh, Instagram. Instagram. Hello, Not Instagram. called Instagram. <laughs> the people are there. I know. Sophie's there. Jade, Sophie's saying hi, Dave. Hi. Zoe's saying hi, Dad. Dave's saying hi. Hello. <laughs> I just wash my pot. Okay, you just wash your pot. Is that for another cup of tea, is it, Dad? Yes. Would that be your 87th of the day? Four. He's in trouble today. Do you know why he's in trouble? Because, because Mr. Morgis and my dad have uh, cleaned up today. My dad has managed to break one of my dishes whilst he was cleaning up, a very precious one. So it was Anyway, where was I? Salad. Um, he's got shouted at. Um, 
Salad, yes. So this is one of the salads that I always make on the lunch t on the um, Airbnb day, and everybody really likes it. And um, and so I've been asked the recipe a couple of times, and it's one of the things that whilst we were renovating, so part of this series of stuff is not just like lockdown baking, but things that we've made repeatedly and frequently through our long renovation. As you can see, we have not got a proper kitchen, um, and it's really healthy and it makes us feel good when we eat it. And I think when you're renovating and when you are living in stressful times as lockdown is as well eating things which are easy and relatively inexpensive and getting the ingredients can be swapped in and out for different things as well there's a thing that I, I always put the same ingredients in it but you know if I haven't got any apple or if I haven't got some lettuce or I haven't got white cabbage then it's not a it's not like the end of the world so um so let's have a look what we're making we're going to make a crunchy apple and cashew salad and it's also got white cabbage in it it's got celery in it it's got Flat leaf parsley at the end. It's got, you don't have to get them from posh way shows, by the way. Um, cranberries, which it add that little bit of sweetness. So you've got crunchiness from the cashew nuts. So I've got cashew nuts and I'm going to toast them. And it's also got halloumi halloumi in it. So I'm going to, if you've never cooked with halloumi, most people have. Um, but if you haven't, then we're going to, um, I'm going to pan fry that in a little bit of olive oil. And it just, um, I'll show you how to do that. And it, it's no, this is not like cold on work cooking. This is just easy recipes for people who are ready. So let's get going. And actually, um, let me tell you, we could, we could, he could join in with some of you. Some of you could join in if you fancied and tell me what you're doing. Tell me whilst I'm chopping, whilst I'm chopping here, tell me what some of you are up to today on Good Friday, on a day that really most of us would have had um, family round, maybe. So I'm going to start off with my white cabbage. I've used about a quarter of a white cabbage. So it's going to be, well, I was going to say it's going to be four of us eating this, but my dad point blank refuses to eat anything that's green. Um, so he won't be eating it. It'll just be Lady Jade, me and Mr. Morgis. Um, so I'm chopping it into, like, not, oh, are you far away now? You can see that, can't you? I'll put it on the, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it on my great big Chinese chopper. Show you the sizes. So, you know, not tiny, and it doesn't have to be in slivers. And you know what? If you want to do it in slices, you can do it in slices. And if you want to do it in chunks, you can do it in chunks. Not prescriptive here at all. So I like. Um, do you make your own coleslaw? You lot. I, lo I love making um, carrot, fresh carrot and um, white cabbage coleslaw, just with a bit of almonds. And that's basically white cabbage. That's what I use it for. If you've never used it before, let's see what you're up to. Glad you got your clothes on today. You're talking to me, Zoe. Oh, my, oh, my dad. Yes, he was he was naked the other day. It was quite scary. Do any of you used to watch Steptoe and Son? Are you all? Are you that old? Dad looks like um, the old man in Wilfred Owen, is he? <laughs> Steptoe, like with no clothes on. Folded all the bags for life into those neat triangles. Essential things for a Good Friday. Hope you're saving my Easter egg. Ah, that's because my sister has joined in. Yeah, Easter's cancelled this year. Kira, Kira. I have actually, I did actually buy some mini eggs a few weeks ago, but then life got a bit traumatic and I ate them. But you're my sister and you love me, so I'm presuming you'll forgive me. It has come to that. Now set out drinking, drinking Moscow mules? At five past two in the afternoon, that's outrageous. Sophie, you put homemade curry in the slow cooker and cooking for us and my neighbours. Oh, that's good of you. I don't think we might need you to come and do us a food parcel, Sophie. Uh, so basically, in with this, I've put about a quarter of white cabbage, a quarter of, um, and, it, and not a massive white cabbage either. Uh, then I've used two sticks of celery, and I'll show you something else that we've done. Do you, did you see the other day when I was talking to Lynn Lamborn, who is an upcycler um, based down south in Helion Tans, and we were talking about Annie Sloan, etc., but also Lynn grows a lot of her own vegetables, etc., and she told me that when you get your celery... So again, not not huge chunks, but not slivers. So something you can get your teeth into, celery. So two sticks of celery in there. And Lynn was telling me, I'll get at you, that when you finished um, chopping your celery, this is what you've got to do. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. Look at this. You take the bottom off the celery and put it in a little thing of water and change the water every couple of days. And look, it's growing already. So I'm going to have my own celery plant. Check that out. She was very proud of that, I'd done that as well. 
should be the day. Um, so that's that. And then the next ingredient, so you've got your white cabbage and you've got your celery, and I'm going to use apples. And actually, this morning in the um, went to a little greengrocer's in Withington, right near Manchester, where, in Manchester, right near where we live. And they had um, English cox apples. So I thought I'd get one of those. You can, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what apple you use. You can use golden delicious. You can use a red apple. Doesn't matter. Don't use a Bramley cooking apple because that will be horrible. So I put in a whole apple in because we like our apple. Again, just sort of that sort of size. That bounced right into the food bin as well, you know. So I've got a whole apple going in. What else you're up to? What else is everybody up to? Just joining in. Um, I just spoke with my stepson before. Um, who normally Easter weekend would be heading up to see us from um, down in Berkshire. He lives in Posh Berkshire. We live in Common Manchester. He lives in Posh Berkshire. So normally he'd be heading up and seeing us and for Easter. And so that's going to be really weird. It's going to be really weird this year. It's not really going to feel like Easter because we're not going to see family. I'm not going to see my nieces and my nephew. It's really odd. I think a lot of people will be feeling like that, won't they? A lot of people will be feeling a bit a bit weird about this weekend. I don't know what you're up to. Pauline's building a wall down at the bottom of the garden. Check you out. Put it on stories. Let's have a look. What are you building it out of, Pauline? Um, so we've put, the crunch, we've put the crunchiness, basically. We started off with the crunchiness. And then I'll, after, I'm going to put some iceberg lettuce in. An iceberg just sort of pads it out, but it gives it a bit of a zing of freshness, a bit of, bit of um, liquid when you bite into it. But first of all, um, but next of all, sorry, I'm going to cook the, I'm going to cook my nuts. I'm going to toast my nuts. Does anybody else there, is anyone else there obsessed with toasted nuts in salad? If you've never had it, honestly, um, you'll love it. So, um, oh, hi, Sam. Bespoke steel windows. Uh, Sam is, what are you cooking today, lovely? I'm making a crunchy apple, or a crunchy salad. Um, and it's got all sorts in it. Apple and celery and white cabbage and cranberries and halloumi halloumi and toasted nuts. And it's absolutely delicious. And I will put the recipe on. I'll tell you what I'll do before I toast the nuts is I'll do the halloumi. Oh no, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Because the nuts take a while to cool down. And normally I'd have, been, I'd have had them on whilst I was... Um, whilst I was chopping up the veg, but if you've never, if you, most of you, I'm presuming most of you have cooked with or eaten halloumi before, or maybe you've only eaten it in a restaurant, so when you get it, it's got some liquid in the packet, normally it's got some liquid in it to keep it moist, so if you're going to pan fry it just to, um, just to crisp up the outside, I'll show you, you want to just dry it on a piece of kitchen towel, because otherwise when you put it in the pan, it goes all, it, it sort of starts to all sloppy because it's got too much liquid. I'm sure there's a technical term for that, but, and if there's any chefs watching, you'll be able to tell me. So with my halloumi, I'll probably, I'll chop it up into about five slices. I'll show you. Can you see? There you go. One, two, there you go. You don't want it too thin because when you put it in the frying pan, you want it to be, um, you want it to brown on either side, properly brown, when you fry it, when you pan fry it, a little bit of olive oil. So if you have, if you cut your slices too thin, then it's it's quite crispy. It loses all the um, the moisture from inside. So it sort of softens up. It's, quite, it's a bit rubbery, isn't it, halloumi, when you first cut it? But then when you moisten it, it goes all, all sort of aerated and fluffy, as long as you don't overcook it. I'll show you actually. Let's turn this round. Hang on. Just in case you've never, just in case you've never done it. Hang on. Ooh, look at that. I've got my I've actually got, I've got my phone attached to a step ladder. Because I haven't got one of those lovely kitchens where I'm standing in front of you with a great big island. So there you go. There you go. Right, let's have our single and this, the other point of this salad is you can do it on a um, really minimal surface. So if you literally are renovating and you've got one tiny table and one induction hole, let's put a little bit of olive oil in. And I've got my induction hob on, on about number six. Um, so you don't want it, the thing with halloumi, if you have it on too low, if you put your, your um, temperature on sort of two or three, it just stews, it just stews in the oil and you want it to actually go crispy, you want it to cook and you need to keep looking at it otherwise it can burn. Let's have a look, let's have a look what the recipe you're doing. Are we making it in stone, Pauline? 
It's one of all right. I'm going to look at your stories in a minute. I've been directing Greg on garden jobs for my sun lounger. Zoe, that sounds marvellous. I'm just looking where Mr. Morgan says he's outside on the sun lounger. They might have to do the same. Although I'll show you the plants that I've bought in a second. Recycle brick. Get in. The only thing you've bought is the mortar. We like that. We like that, don't we? Like that, don't we? What sort of brick? I'm going to have a look. Have you got old bricks? Like old recycled bricks like the ones here? Or um, Looking forward to Laura with you tomorrow. Oh, yes, that's the other thing. So while this oil is heating up, so tomorrow, did lots of you watch um, Your Homemade Perfect this week on Tuesday? I think it got quite a lot of attention. Hang on a minute. I think um, this that particular episode, listen. There we go, I've got a bit of a sizzle. Um, yeah, got quite a lot of attention. Robert's transformation in Brighton of Sylvia, ooh, of Sylvia and Julian's house. Um, so lots of you, turn it around a little bit. Lots of you really enjoyed the episode. It was just the most stunning transformation. I mean, I don't know Robert's brain and how he thinks of things to do, how he thinks of these things to do in people's houses, just doesn't, doesn't really think like most of the architects, does he, at all. Um, so, uh, what we've got actually tomorrow at one o'clock is a chat with Laura Clark, Laura Jane Clark. So the other architect on the show, there's, it's a competition if you haven't seen it, and um, BBC Two at eight o'clock, it's on iPlayer as well, competition between Laura and Robert for this series, um, where they, um, actually, let me give you a tip in a minute, um, where they compete to um, win the commission on people's houses in last week's public one. So the other thing, I tell you what, um, I watched uh, a really good, whoop, I watched a really good um, cookery video with a, a barbecue chef. And basically he was talking about something which I'd never heard of before called the Maillard reaction. And it's when, like fancy chefs will know all about this, but I didn't know and you might not know. So it's about when that happens. So you know when the browning, when the browning happens. That's what, oh, there you go. So that's what you want it to, whoop, that's what you want it to look like. And it's um, the Maillard reaction. And it's much better if when you put something in the pan, and whether it's, I don't know, salmon or chicken thighs or whatever, you actually put it in and leave it. And it's really tempting, isn't it, to fat and, fat and fanny about with it, move things about all the time. And actually, it's far better to put things in and just leave them to brown and that browning is called the Maillard reaction. M-A-I-L-L-A-R-D, I think. And that's all I'll do with you think. So that one's actually, so keep checking it, that one's actually, that one's done. And then basically for the salad, what you need to happen is it to be browned on all sides and then I'm going to cut those into little cubes to go in the salad. And it's just a really, really nice texture with the um, cabbage and with the apple and then with the sweetness of the cranberries with the cheese as well. So basically that's about it. And go on a minute. Yeah, that's about it. So just make sure that they don't catch and burn. So let's go. Although I quite like that little bit of burn, you know, just a little bit of crispiness. There we go. So I'm actually just going to leave the heat on because that was nice and warm and I'm just going to put the nuts in there. When we, um, when we were renovating before we had the sink, so at one point, oh my goodness, um, I think for about, for about a year we didn't actually have any hot water in the house at all, like no hot water, no boiler, nothing, um, so it gets on perfect. I quite like when I'm toasting. I'm going to turn this down a little bit, actually. Oh, yeah, it's on number six. That's probably a little bit high. So I'll turn that down to number four. Just keep... And don't... You know what I'm saying about the um, Maillard reaction with the cheese? Don't do that unless, Don't do that with the nuts because they catch really easily and they will burn really, really easily. So let me get my thing. So you just want them so then just nice and toasted like that. And I add a little bit of salt and pepper to them whilst they're cooking. And then again, oh, just do it so they're toasted on all sides. I was talking about something then, and I've completely, I've completely lost the track of what I was saying. What was I saying then? Oh yeah, when I was renovating, <laughs> when we didn't have any hot water. Um, 
even if you have no hot water for a few weeks, you can have one of these induction hops and just use and just wipe a non-stick pan. Use this and do this and wipe a non-stick pan with a piece of kitchen roll. Kitchen roll, yeah. So you can actually still cook like this, even if you have no hot water. Right, so that's done now. Ooh, turn that off. And when you're taking the nuts out, don't try and don't try and try not to drag all the oil out of the pan as well. Because you want them to sort of start drying off and going a bit crispy. There you go. You can see the liquid's left in the pan. There we go. So that's that. So I've got my, I've um, done out of the same pan, don't need to wash it in between. I've got my halloumi and my nuts. So those will just um, cool down a little bit. I mean, you can put them in, you can put them in the freezer or the fridge or whatever. Let me just turn you back again. Dum, 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 dum. Just crack the, just crack the ladder. Right, what else, what else is going on? Bespoke steel windows, see I've reminded you. Oh yeah, so that's what we're talking about. So basically, um, I do lose my train of thought quite regularly, don't I? Um, basically tomorrow at one o'clock, and um, it'd be great if you want to go on my stories and have a little look, because I've got, um, I've put a story on there where you can ask Laura a question. So you can type in your question. And if the box isn't long enough for your question, which two people have already messaged me saying, this box isn't big enough for my question, then I've got a great big long, quest long question on the DMs. Um, uh, then send it in. Because you know, this is probably, where's my scissors? Hang on one sec. This is quite a rare opportunity for um and many of you are homeowners and many of you um are doing renovations or are thinking of doing up your houses or you're just obsessed with property and interiors so this is an absolutely incredible opportunity for you to ask laura who is you know a a renowned architect a tv architect a very very talented at what she does this is your opportunity because i'm just chopping up the um halloumi into little squares and then it'll cool down quicker as well. This is your opportunity to ask her questions about your house or questions about some of the episodes that maybe you saw on Your Homemade Perfect last year. Um, and I have actually, on the stories, I've put some reminders of the ones from last year. So um, Laura won St Albans and Eversholt. Eversholt was the one with Suzanne, Suzanne and Danny. Um, so the one with the plywood kitchen and the, the pink doors with the great big hallway and that beautiful Instagrammable um, kitchen run of shelves at the back of the kitchen. Um, St Albans was the one with the fantastic Crittel doors. And actually the lady that did the Crittel doors is on here, Sam. So at Bespoke Steel Windows. Um, she also won Grantham. So that was Mimi and Luke's. Um, and Martin and I, Mr Rogers and I worked on all of those shows and spent quite a lot of time with all of the contributors at their houses. So between Laura and I, if you have any questions at all, <coughs> your home may perfect. Oh, not allowed to do that. Don't do that, don't do that on the telly. Do they eat the halloumi? Um, if you have any questions at all, then make sure you go on the stories and, and, and ask them and join in. And likewise, um, not likewise, but also, if you have any friends who you know really enjoyed watching your home perfect or um and people that aren't on instagram give them a shout and let them know right then my nuts are cooling my halloumi is cooling so what we're going to do now i've already got the celery the apple and the uh, white cabbage in there and i'm just going to add a little bit of iceberg lettuce as well and say you know it's not a it's not this is how I like to make this salad, but if you don't happen to have some white cabbage or you don't happen to have an, an apple, um, then it's not the end of the world, is it? And it's a, it's actually a great meal because it's the things that you that often are still in the fridge. You know when you've bought celery, I don't know if you're making some stock or you've bought celery for whatever reason, or you've used half an iceberg lettuce to make a salad. These, all these ingredients tend to be things that you have, like one apple or two sticks of celery. Which is quite why it's quite handy. So I'm chopping up, chopping up my iceberg. That can go in as well. And then I'm going to put in some of the cranberries that we talked about. I think these might be quite big ones. Let's have a look. Yeah, you see, these are big, 
big fat whole American cranberries. They always do everything large, don't they, the Americans? Everything's big. <laughs> so for this salad, for, for where I've put used two um two sticks of celery, I've got, I don't know, a handful. Not very good at measurements. What have we got? That much. That much. I don't like raisins or currants, but I absolutely adore cranberries. And these are quite big, so if they're massive, well, it's like the size of my blooming fingernail, isn't it? Just chop them in half. Some of them are smaller than others. Because otherwise, when you dish up the salad, you know, you're going to be having people fighting over the cranberry. If you, only put, if you only put 10 cranberries in and the massive ones, then people will be coming to cranberry blows, which is no good. You don't want people fighting over your salad. What else is, what else is going on? No grated, hang on. I know every single one of Laura's designs. Do you? <laughs> Quite right too. So you're going to be sending in a question. Key cans, are you going to be sending in a question? I hope so. Um, no grated ca no grated carrot. This is this is my this is my sister, right? Because whenever I come, whenever she comes down to Morris Mansion, she says, "Are you going to make coleslaw? Are you going to make that coleslaw?" And it's become a bit of a family favourite. So, 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 so. How's it feel to be a lady of leisure? Anyway, Kira, not working today. My sister and my brother-in-law. Um, are both both still working at the minute, so some of us are on lockdown, um, but they're both having to still go out to work, so they've both got a rare weekend off. In fact, I'm going to put that in, can you see? So there's a good mix, there's probably a good mix of everything there, you can, like when you, you can see everything, I can see bits of apple, I can see cranberries in all the, in all the portions when you spoon it out, so that's you, when you know you've kind of got the balance right. Okay, um, the halloumi. The halloumi now, because I've put it up, it's very nice, <laughs> because I've cut it up, it's cooled. So what you don't want to do, because it's a salad, don't put the um, ingredients in when it's hot. So make sure that halloumi has cooled down and make sure the nuts are still a bit warm. Um, but just make sure it's cooled down. That's how I feel. Yeah, that's fine. And the other thing as well is don't put too much salt in this salad because halloumi is quite salty anyway it's quite a salty cheese so um i've put some salt and pepper a little bit of salt and pepper on the nuts i've put um the halloumi is already salted so don't add any more because otherwise it will be big too salty um okay okay and final bits of final bit actually i'm just going to put some um parsley and at this point while my while my nuts cool so I'll just chop the parsley. Um, I use as well, not cur not curly parsley, flat leaf parsley for this. So not even a handful. So about that, about, yeah, that's not a handful. It's about, about a third of a handful. You don't want to be too parsley-ish. It, it gives it a bit of a zing, gives it a bit of freshness. And actually I should use, where's my, where's my chopper? I don't know who it is. My cleaver, which is the best thing ever for chopping herbs. I bought this, um, honestly, I've had this about 20 years. Best thing I've ever. Unlike this, unlike this chopping board, which you can hear, it's not flat anymore because it's been washed that many times, so I need to, get, need to get a new chopping board. Right, so you can throw that in, throw the flat leaf parsley in. And then, just whilst those nuts cool down a little bit, let me show you what I've bought because actually I don't really like supermarket herbs so you know the little plastic packs of herbs that you get for the supermarket i don't really like them because they do tend to go off quite quickly don't they and there's better ways of doing it so let me show you the two things that we've done um the, the one way is to buy your herbs from a small green grocers get these from the little green grocers in withington you get big bunches they would last it around the bottom not wrapped in plastic and you get far more for your money far more for your money and they last longer and the other thing that this is the ladder that my thing was on. Hang on. This this is what else we've been buying. Um, I ordered these a few weeks ago, and they got delivered yesterday. So been to gone been to gone pick them up. These are some herbs that I'm going to be planting in the Morgus garden today. So we've got some coriander. Um, I've actually got some seeds. We've got some wild rocket, but we've also got some rocket seeds. We've got some thyme going on. We've got some sage. I have got some thyme. I have, did have some thyme over in the corner, but the wet winter killed it off. And um, hello, Missy Moo Moo. 
and um, we've got some more sage here. Oh, there's some mint. More thyme. I couldn't find any basil at all or any parsley. So if anybody knows where you can get that, it's like obviously like crack. You can't get hold of it. And I bought two globe artichokes. It did stress me out that they came in plastic bags, but I will reuse the plastic bags. I did get quite anxious when he gave me those. And yes, here is the broken bowl. Somebody is not in my good books. Never let, never let rip wrap anywhere near. Seriously, seriously, my dad. Kira, if you're still watching, what is he like? Literally, you can give him something and within 30 seconds, it'll be broken. He just breaks things. So he decided he was going to tidy up when I was out getting some food this morning. He decided, oop, just need to wash my hands. After touching those herbs, he decided he was going to help tidy up in the front room and broke my beautiful antique bowl. Anyway, anyway, so quickly, quickly, just wash my hands. Oh, actually, the other thing, I don't normally put um, put spinach in, um, but I've got, I've got uh, I don't know, a fifth of a bag of spinach left. So I'm just going to throw some spinach in. I quite like doing it, you know. I don't like, we never, ever, ever, ever waste food here. We either, we either make something and freeze it, but we really, really never, um, even before this whole lockdown thing, and I think people are going to get much, much better at not wasting food. But we really, really rarely do it. So if there's something in the fridge that can just be chucked in a stir fry or chucked in a salad, then, then we're going to do it. So that's a little bit of a wild card. It's not normally in, but I've got some. So you can see, it starts to look very healthy. The magic ingredient. All of the nuts. All of the nuts. And then, whoop. And then... As a dressing, dead simple. Again, these are not, these are like not recipes. Renovation, my renovation recipes are not recipes, things which are hard to get hold of. It's a dork recipes. So I'll use just a um, good dollop of Helmer's mayonnaise. And then also, always keep in a little bit of Caesar salad dressing. I know you can make it yourself. You can put a little bit of a more egg yolk and a little bit of white wine vinegar and I know but it's just handy isn't it and especially when you're renovating you haven't all necessarily always got time to make your own Caesar salad dressing have you let's face it because you're busy renovating and then you mix it all up and then literally that's it and I'm not even kidding it's completely delicious seriously completely delicious oh you can also add into this um don't put, so if you're going to do a crunchy salad like this, it works really well with um, chicken and it works nicely with fish, um, white fish, but it doesn't, don't think about putting things like tomato in it. You don't want sloppy um, fruit or veg in there um, and you don't want onions in there because they'll just take over. So yeah, although there are things you do think, oh, I could just throw this or that in, just be a little bit mindful. crunchy salad and it's really, it's really good shall I have a taste oh it's really good it's really good now mm -mm 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 -mm. I shall put the recipe on the blog 